Good day everyone, Dr Polaris here. Before I start today's main topic, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to all of those wonderful people who have supported my channel since its inception almost a year ago. We are now at over a thousand subscribers, which truly means the world to me. I'm truly grateful, and I hope for even better things for this channel in the years to come. Now, back to today's scheduled programming. The Monito del Monte, which is Spanish for Little Bush Monkey, also known by the scientific name Dromesiops gleroides, is a diminutive marsupial native only to some sections of South America. It is the only extant species in the ancient order Microbiotheria, and the sole New World representative of the superorder Australadelphia. The species is nocturnal and arboreal, and lives in thickets of South American mountain bamboo, aided by its partially prehensile tail. Most of their population can be found in Chile, but there is also some overflow into the mountainous areas of Argentina. Their size ranges from 16 to 42 grams, which is 0.56 to 1.48 ounces. They have short and dense fur that is primarily brownish grey, with patches of white at their shoulders and back, and their underside is more of a cream colour. Monitos also have distinct black rings around their eyes. Their small furred ears are well rounded and their rostrums are short. The head to body length is around 8 to 13 centimetres, and their tail length is between 9 and 13 centimetres. It primarily eats insects and other small invertebrates, supplemented with fruit. Monitos normally reproduce in the spring, and can have a litter size varying anywhere from one to four young. The females have a fur-lined pouch containing four teats, which the young then latch onto for their development. When the young are mature enough to leave the pouch, they are nursed in a nest, and then carried on the mother's back. The young remain in association with the mother after weaning for some time. Both males and females reach sexual maturity after two years. They are famously known to reproduce rather aggressively, sometimes leaving blood on the reproductive organs. Monitos many live in trees, where they construct spherical nests of water-resistant colhue leaves. Sorry, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. These leaves are then lined with moss or grass and placed in well-protected areas of the tree. The nests are sometimes covered with grey moss as a form of camouflage. These nests provide the animals with some form of protection from the cold, both when it is active and when it hibernates in the winter. It also stores fat at the base of its tail for this purpose. A study performed in the temperate forests of southern Argentina showed a mutualistic seed dispersal relationship between Dromesiops geroides and Tristerix combirosus, also known as the Locrocanthes mistletoe. The Monito del Monte is the single dispersal agent for this plant, and without it the plant would likely become extinct. Monitos eat the fruit of this tree, and thus disperse the seeds. Scientists speculate that the coevolution of these two species could have begun 60 to 70 million years ago. It has long been suspected that South America's marsupials were ancestral to those of Australia, consistent with the fact that the two continents were connected via Antarctica in the early Cenozoic. This may seem unusual, given that we tend to think of Australia as the epicentre of marsupial evolution, and the present-day distribution of these animals lies almost entirely in the southern hemisphere. However, the ancestors of all marsupials alive today actually originated in the northern hemisphere during the early Cretaceous. The oldest possible relative of marsupials so far discovered is the Chinese Cynodelphus, a small possum-like arboreal animal from the famous Liaoning fossil site. However, in recent years the identity of this genus has come into question, with a 2018 study suggesting that Cynodelphus was actually a basal eutherian instead. If this conclusion turns out to be correct, then the oldest definitive marsupial relative would be the American Hollow Clemensia from the Albion stage of the Cretaceous. These mammals were in fact not true marsupials, but part of a broader group known as Metatheria. Metatheria is the mammalian clade that includes all mammals more closely related to marsupials than to eutherians. First proposed by Thomas Henry Huxley in 1880, 
It is a more inclusive group than marsupials. It contains all living forms, as well as many extinct non-marsupial relatives. They differ from all other mammals in certain morphologies such as their dental formula, which includes about five upper and four lower incisors, a canine, three premolars and four molars. Other morphologies include many features of the postcranial skeleton, such as wrist and ankle apomorphies. All metatherians share the same derived pedal characters of the foot bones and calcaneal features of the ankle region. Like living marsupials, these extinct metatherians would have also given birth to tiny, poorly developed, fetus-like offspring that may or may not have been carried in a pouch. During the Cretaceous, metatherians were highly successful animals that lived in North America, Asia and Europe, with the United States being the centre of their diversity. They inhabited a wide range of ecological niches, ranging from tiny, mouse-sized insectivores to powerful predators with shearing bites the size of domestic cats. However, the reign of the metatherians on the northern continents was brought to an end by the KPG extinction event. While this extinction is most famous for wiping out the non-avian dinosaurs, many other groups of animals were hit hard as well, including the metatherians. While they didn't die out at the boundary, with some genera persisting into the Miocene in the Old World, their numbers never recovered and became overshadowed by the rapidly evolving placental mammals. However, perhaps just before the end of the Cretaceous, several lineages of metatherians arrived on the island continent of South America. With competition from other mammals being somewhat limited, they exploded in diversity during the Paleocene and Eocene. One metatherian lineage became South America's dominant mammalian carnivores, the Sporacidonts, which included all sorts of predatory forms that showed a great deal of convergent evolution with the placental carnivores of other continents. Thus, we have the somewhat dog-like Lycopsis, the weasel-like Cladocyctis, and the saber-toothed cat-like Thylacosmilus. Most South American metatherians, however, tended to be arboreal, and this was the case for the earliest marsupials. Although the oldest remains of true marsupials come from the early Paleocene of Brazil and Colombia, it is likely that they originated before this, perhaps in North America during the late Cretaceous. These earliest marsupials would have strongly resembled modern opossums, and they spread out and diversified across ancient South America, eventually colonising Antarctica during the Paleocene. By this time, the lineages that led to modern opossums, the small shrew opossums and the Monito del Monte had already split off from each other. It was once thought that all American marsupials were part of a single clade known as Ameridelphia, while all the Australian marsupials were members of the clade Australidelphia. However, modern genetic testing has disproven this idea with it being found that the opossums are the most basal living members of marsupialia, followed by the shrew opossums. Australidelphia has proven to be a natural clade, including all Australian pouched mammals and, surprisingly, the South American Monito del Monte. This suggests that Australian marsupials originated in South America and migrated to Australia via Antarctica during the early Eocene. The modern genus Dromesiops is the sole surviving member of a once far more commonplace group known as Microbiotheria. Fossils of these animals have been recovered from the early Paleocene of Bolivia, represented by the genus Carcia, while numerous genera are known from various Paleogene and Neogene fossil sites in South America. A number of possible Microbiotheres, represented by isolated teeth, have also been recovered from the Middle Eocene La Maceta formation of Seymour Island, Western Antarctica. Finally, several undescribed microbiotheres have been reported from the early Eocene Tingamara fauna in northeastern Australia. Australia's earliest known marsupial is Jarthia, a primitive mouse-like animal that lived about 55 million years ago. Jarthia had been identified as the earliest known Australidelphian, and this research suggested that the Monito del Monte was the last of a clade which included Jarthia. This implied that the ancestors of the Monito del Monte might have reached South America via back migration from Australia, 
the time of divergence between the Monito del Monte and the Australian marsupials was estimated to have been 46 million years ago. However, in a 2010 analysis of retrotransposon insertion sites in the nuclear DNA of a variety of marsupials, while confirming the placement of the Monito del Monte in Australadelphia, showed that its lineage is the most basal of that superorder. The study also confirmed that the most basal of all marsupial orders are the other two South American lineages, the opossums and true opossums. This indicates that Australadelphia arose in South America, along with the ancestors of all other living marsupials, and probably reached Australia in a single dispersal event after Microbiotheria split off. Thus, all Australian marsupials, from kangaroos to koalas to the Tasmanian devil, are descended from ancestors that would have looked very much like the monitos still with us today. It is a shame, then, that this last member of an ancient lineage is under threat in its native lands. For the past few years, the number of Dromesiops individuals has declined, and the species is now classified as near-threatened. Many factors have contributed to this decline, including its already limited habitat which is constantly faced with deforestation and fragmentation, the introduction of the domestic cat which is correlated with a decrease in numbers, and the creature is considered bad luck by the natives. Houses have been burnt down after monitos were seen inside them, and other people believe that this marsupial is venomous or causes disease, though in reality they do not pose any threat to humans whatsoever. This unlucky reputation reminds me of the superstitions that surround the eye eye of Madagascar, with both animals being unusual, rare and nocturnal, believed to be the living embodiments of bad luck by locals. Hopefully, conservation efforts can save this rather adorable little survivor, and members of Microbiotheria can live on for another 60 million years. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering another bizarre Triassic Archosauromorph radiation, the mostly herbivorous Alocotosauria. See you again soon. Cheerio.